Hello, we are Beatriz Pérez Enríquez and Rebeca Reci Cachero, and today we're going to talk about the IES San Isidro Museum. We hope you like it. We are going to talk about the history of the museum, the main floor, the second floor and some extras in the stairs, the third floor and some surprises, and the website we used. The IES San Isidro Museum is located in one of the doors that we can find in the cloister. This was created by the Union of Teachers, Service Personnel Students and Edge Students, whose purpose was to combine the historical part with the pedagogical part. Its history dates back to 1858 when the memories began to be recorded and the initial inventory of the cabinet was controlled. It supposes a recovery of the ancient history of the center. For this, an exhibition is carried out by means of a staircase as a metaphor which represents the ascent through knowledge. For this, there are thematic spaces by subject. When we open the door of the museum, we can see what a class was like years ago, with the students' desks and the teacher's table. These are the original ones. As we can see in the photo, there is also a globe, an old typewriter, and a blackboard. If we look to the right, we can see academic records of famous figures who studied in the IES San Isidro during the 19th and 20th century. There is also a picture of King Juan Carlos I with his classmates in the cloister. We can admire some of the important notebooks and books with which they studied high school students. Before going upstairs, there is a picture of the logo of the IES San Isidro in 1346. When we go up the stairs to go to the second floor, we can see on the wall a hanging painting that represents the old periodic system of the elements. In addition, there are also four pictures hanging containing different minerals with samples and their corresponding names. Also, on the same wall, we can see two plates on plants. The first one represents the stem of a plant, analyzing its interior and its parts, and the other seed represents the part of the flower of the plant indicating their respective parts. Once we are on the second floor, we can see a showcase dedicated to drawing, which contains an old book on the subject from the IES San Isidro, as well as an old compass. The next showcase we come across is the one dedicated to the Decalogue of Average Mathematical Didactics written by Puig Adam, who writes, Didactic rules are asked of me. I would rather wake in didactic awareness, such as ways of feeling rather than ways of doing. However, if they were worth it, here are all the suggestions that I consider most fundamental, after which he recapitulates a total of 10 ideas that he considers most relevant. In addition, this also contains inside different books related to mathematics and a black and white photo. Another showcase shows different masks that refer to classical theater. Among them, we can see a mask of a soldier's helmet and various animals. There is also a sword and several photos and documents that talk about them. If we walk a little further, we find a display case with several fossils, most in the shape of a rectangle. And next to it, there is another display case that contains different minerals and stones. On the bottom shelf, there are larger stones, while the ones above are smaller. Another shelf is dedicated mainly to plants, more specifically how they are born. In the photo, we can see several seeds of plants in the germination process. There are also jars of sand and other jars containing small plants that have already been born. The following subcases that we find are much smaller and contain reliefs. In one we can see several mountains and in another the seismic movement. In the third we can appreciate the view of a precipice seen from the front, being able to see all the rock formation by which it is composed. As we progress through the plan, we find two cabinets which contain plants from tulips and flowers, bee plants, etc. In them, we can see what the plants are like on the outside, and in the case of the bee plant, see what it is like on the inside. It should be noted that this floor has a dark area in which there is a table with a total of 30 images. In addition, in that area, there is an old projector as an issue. And finally, we reach the top floor. 
But before that, we can admire the three microscopes through which we can see the following things. Yeah, we think it is really cool and interesting. Climbing the stairs, we can see a huge Europe map showing the relief of each country, including mountains and rivers. On the wall, there are some animals, a turtle, an owl, a starfish, a monkey, a crocodile, and many more, as you can see in the pictures. When we arrive at the last floor, we can observe large scrolls with, with drawings of insects and their parts and scientific names, for example, a bee or a spider. Next to the scroll of the bee, there is a scheme that explains cell division with all its phases. But the most interesting part are the showcases with replicas of stuffed animals and some of the organs. There are figures of corals, sharks, cockatrails on their jaws, turtles and their shells, frogs, insects and mammals such as bats and sloths. Above these showcases, there is a large number of stuffed birds, such as ducks, owls, vultures, and more, as you can see in the images. If we get to the end of the hall, we can see horns on the walls from bulls and deers, and the skulls of the different homos that inhabited the Iberian Peninsula. Under these showcases, we can admire a giant replica of a colorful fish. But we haven't ended yet. There are a few stairs that led to a life-size showcase. But before that, on the walls, we can see some models of the human brain looked from different angles and showing all its parts. There is a box made of good, and if we open it, there is a skeleton with all the bones. Next to it, there are more models, but this time of muscles such as the human heart, eye and hand. And finally, and the most important, we get to the big showcase. Inside of it, we can see a life-size model of the human muscular system with the veins, muscles, and tendons. And here it is, a selfie of Bea and me with a muscular system. And that's all. Thanks for your attention, and we hope you've liked it. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, José Luis San Pedro. Uh, you can see I, I wrote a life devoted to others. Well, uh, this uh, has a meaning and uh, you will discover uh, this meaning uh, through the presentation and you will understand why I wrote this. Uh, José Luis San Pedro was born on the 1st of February in 1917 in Barcelona. When she, uh, he was only one year old, his family moved uh, to Tangiers, Morocco, because he was a son of a military doctor. Uh, and at the age of uh, 12, he moved uh, to Soria with his aunt and then to Aranjuez, uh, Madrid. At the age of uh, 16, he got a job in Madrid as a customs official, so he had to combine his studies in the San Isidro Institute with uh, his work. Uh, here we can see uh, José Luis San Pedro he, when he was a child in Tangiers. Uh, after being in uh, Aranjuez, he moved to Santander, where uh, he had to fight in the Spanish Civil War in 1936. He fought in the Republican side as an anarchist, and when the national side conquered Santander in 1937, uh, he uh, he moved to the to the national side where, where he fought until the end of the war in 1939. Many years later, he would say about the war. In April uh, 1939, I realized that my people had not won. Neither the one nor the other was mine. 
here we can see uh, this idea of uh, the Spanish Civil War uh, not as a war uh, of um, good people versus uh, bad people but a war uh, between siblings. Uh, after the war in 1939 he finished his first novel La Estatua de Adolfo Espejo. In 1940 he moves to Madrid, uh, where he marries uh, Isabel Pellicer in 1944, the same year in which he begins his studies in economics at the University of Madrid. Uh, it was the first year, in fact, uh, that this degree was taught at the University of Madrid. In, uh, he finished, uh, he graduates with a extraordinary praise Price, sorry, and in 1950 he received his doctorate and from now on he will have to combine his classes in the university as a teacher, as a professor, his job as an, uh, as an economist in the Banco Estero de España, his advisory post at the Ministry of Finance, his participation in the stabilization plan of uh, 1959 and the technical secretariat of the Ministry of Finance uh, since 1962. So uh, he was a uh, busy man in, this, uh, in those days and during this busy period he had time to write Un Sitio para Vivir and El Río que nos lleva, his per first published novel. Uh, his first novel was La Estatua del Espejo, but his first published novel was El Río que nos lleva in 1961. Uh, well, due to the social and political situation in Spain in the 1960s, he tried to look abroad for uh, job opportunities. So in 1964 and 1965 he got a visiting lecturer post in the University of Salford uh, near Manchester and in the University of Liverpool, uh, respectively. Um, between 1969 and 1971 he was a professor in uh, these two universities. In 1971 he requests leave of absence from the Universi Universidad Complutense de Madrid to teach at the Diplomatic School and the Universidad Autónoma both in, in Barcelona. Uh, in the uh, 1970s he was asked to work for the Central Bank uh, considering a possible uh, Central Bank loan to the Roman Dominican Republic. He would say uh, about this period, uh, this uh, funny quote, My an uh, anecdotes from that experience range from the shocking to the picturesque. So we can appreciate the sense of humor uh, of this wonderful person. In 1976, uh, after uh, uh, Franco had uh, died, he returns as a consulting economist in the Banco Exterior de España. Uh, and in 1977, he was appointed senate, senator by royal designation in the first uh, democ democratic courts in Spain, uh, a post he held until uh, 1979. As did other renowned Spanish writers such as uh, Camilo José Cela or Julián Marías. During this time, from 1965 to 1980, he wrote some of his most impressive works, both economic, uh, economic and literary works. For example, Las Fuerzas Económicas de Nuestro Tiempo, eh, El Caballo Desnudo, or Octubre, Octubre. In 1981, after uh, his retirement, he continues writing novels. In fact, the most outstanding one of, of uh, all his production and the most successful ones too. Since 1981, he wrote such well-known works as uh, La Sonrisa Etrusca, La Vieja Sirena, or La Senda del Drago. In 1990, he is admitted in the, in the Royal, the Spanish Royal Academy. And uh, unfortunately, Jose Luis San Pedro died the 8th of April in 2013 in Madrid. Uh, I consider uh, writing his last words uh, as I think they deserve to, 
to be to be in, here in this presentation because I think uh, they were a very beautiful way of saying goodbye uh, to the world. Now I'm starting to feel better. Thank you all very much. Very beautiful words. Now we can see uh, that Jose Luis San Pedro received many awards during his long life, especially at the end of his life. In 2008, he was awarded the Medal of uh, the Order of Charlemagne of the Principality of Andorra. In 2009, he was invested as Doctor Honoris Causa by the, by the Universidad de Sevilla. And in 2010, he was awarded the uh, 24th, 24th uh, Menendez Pelayo International Prize. In the same year, he uh, was awarded the Order of the Arts and Letters of Spain. In 2011, he was awarded the Premio Nacional de las Letras Españolas or National Prize of the Spanish Letters. And in 2012, he was invested at Doctor Honoris Causa by the Universidad de Alcalá de Henares in Madrid. Uh, well, José Luis San Pedro is one of the most important Spanish novelists, novelists and economists of the 20th century. His social economy still resonates today as he was able to adapt to the times and even to anticipate certain social movements and currents such as uh, 15M a 15M, of which he was one of the main defenders. He def uh, supported a social economy based on, uh, uh, on make the, the rich less rich and the poor less poor. Although his time at the Institute uh, San Isidro Institute did not have a significant impact on him, it undoubtedly encouraged him to study and hard work which enabled him to obtain prestigious positions and develop serious economic theories uh, as uh, we saw, for example, uh, working for the Central Bank or the Banco Exterior de España. Uh, and they still, uh, these theories still leave their mark, their mark today as many people uh, still defend his, his theories. Uh, now uh, you can understand why I uh, I wrote uh, that phrase in the beginning of the presentation: a life devoted to others. He spent his life trying to to make a better life for for everyone. Uh, another thing we can learn uh, from uh, Jose Luis San Pedro's life is hard work and organization. Especially when in his youth, he was able to combine work, studies, and time from writing. And this, uh, I think, is a very important uh, lesson from this this master, that is Jose Luis San Pedro. And the, it's a lesson we can apply, we can everyone apply in our daily lives. From his books also we can learn uh, much, much more. I personally recommend La Sonrisa Etrusca, which is the only book of San Pedro uh, that uh, I have read. And in the beginning, uh, when I started reading, it seemed a bit strange. But uh, after reading it, when I finished the book and reflecting on it, 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 it turned on uh, a a very, very moving story, a very beautiful story uh, from which we can learn a lot. Also, um, uh, I, I consider uh, putting some uh, quotes he made. He left us a lot of wonderful quotes and I think they are worth reading. There are two types of economists those who work to make the rich richer and those who work to make the poor less poor. This is exactly the same I said before uh, about his social uh, economic theories that uh, are based on um, help the people with less resources and try to make uh, their lives uh, better.
the system is broken and lost. That's, that's why you have a fear. This, uh, I love these strong and uh, short uh, phrases, quotes that have a lot of a lot of uh, meaning uh, behind. After the crisis, another crisis will follow in the short term. We can see this uh, reflection on the uh, economic financial crisis of uh, 2008 that uh, affected Spain especially, and here we can see his uh, thoughts about it. This world is betraying life. Another short and strong uh, quote. Time is not cold, time is life. Uh, this is uh, personally my favorite and I think it uh, resumes all uh, the thoughts and all the the, the life and uh, the, all the life of uh, Jose Luis San Pedro all these uh, thoughts and all this uh, all this work he he did to to make life a, a good place to to live well, uh, that, uh, that was everything. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, and, well, that's it. Hello, we are Lucia Perez and Zaira Aragonés, and we are going to talk about Pio Baroja. Pio Baroja, Inés was born on December 28, 182 to December 30, 1956. He was a Spanish writer, one of the key novelists of the generation of 98. Also, he was a member of an illustrious family. His brother Ricardo was a painter, writer and engraver, and his nephew Julio Caro Baroja, son of his younger sister Carmen, was a well-known anthropologist. Pio was born in San Sebastián, Guipúzcoa, the son of Serafín Baroja, also a noted writer and opera libretti. He studied at the San Isidro Institute in Madrid, the oldest institute in Spain, and through with artists such as Quevedo, Antonio Machado, José Canarejas, and Gregorio Marallón, among others, have passed. Baroja, who received his doctorate in medicine, ended up abandoning this profession in favor of literature, an activity in which he cultivated the novel and, to a much lesser extent, the theater. Pio Baroja was, in general, a terrible student. He was always much more interested in novels than in textbooks. His surly and rebellious character also hurt him greatly as he ended up quarreling with some of the teachers and did not arouse sympathy in any of them. He really never knew what career he liked to study, in truth, none of them interested him. Baroja's masterpiece is considered to be the Tree of Knowledge. It was published in 1911, although the action takes place between 1887 and 1918. It is a semi-autobiographical work divided into two symmetrical parts, 1 to 3 and 5 to 7, separated by a long philosophical conversation between the protagonist and his uncle, Dr. Iturrioz. The Tree of Knowledge is Pio Baroja's study of the career and attitude of a late 19th century medical student trying to make ideological and professional progress in a declining Spanish society. Baroja's autobiographical protagonist, Andres Hurtado, is an incorrigible pessimist and cynic going through a protected metaphysical crisis. He claims one millimeter above a monkey when not one centimeter below a pig, and he is gripped by a nauseating sense of disorientation in life the anguish, the desperation of not knowing what to do with life, of having no plan, of feeling lost. The novel takes up with Hurtado finishing his studies in Madrid, where he paints a Damien portrait of bourgeois society. Having graduated, he next takes up a post as a doctor in a small provincial town, 
when he becomes antisocial and quite ill with a lack of intellectual simulate on offer, as well as insulating himself from the community as a result of his idealism. The town leaves him with the impression of a Spanish still laboring under the same old catechism of medieval times with the ignorant masses quietly depend on their decadent and equally ignorant landowning patrons. On his return to Madrid, he works as a hygiene doctor and begins a dawn marriage with a prostitute called Lulu, drawn to her frank manner and refreshing mordacity. Having faced years of slow deterioration in his prospect, the book ends with him facing one's final anguish. The tragic death of the protagonist Andres Hurtado symbolizes Baroja's own real life rupture with the medical profession, which will set him on his path into the world of literature. The main characters are Andres Hurtado, his wife Lulu, and his uncle Dr. Iturioth. And here you can see a fragment that we have chosen from the book. Hello everybody, my name is Victor Ramirez Castaño and I'm going to talk to you about a celebrity who studied in this high school, Santiago Segura. Santiago Segura Silva was born in 1965 in Caravancel Alto, Madrid, a village near the capital that was later absorbed by the main city. He attended to high school at ES San Isidro, although he studied his last year at the United States, where he improved his English. The fluency of this language would later on allow him to take part on international movies and even to adapt himself into English when necessary. It was during his teenage years when he started to record his, his first short films. After, later on, he graduated at Complutense University of Madrid, obtaining his fine arts title. After finishing his studies, he began to write erotic stories for some adult magazines and also worked as a voice actor in some films with the same thematic. In this period of time, he recorded his last short film using his Super 8mm camera, both when he was only 12 years old. This film earned him a prize at Cinema Jove de Valencia. One of the judges of that conquest, Fernando Trueba, had insisted on the fact that it should be him the one who should win the conquest, so Segura thanked him after getting the prize. After this, he appeared as an extra in several films, where he started to work on his own 35mm short films as Fernando Trueba recommended him. In fact, one of these films, called Perturbado, earned him his first Goya Award for Best Fictional Short Film. This movie was about a crazy man who was a beautiful woman, so he decides to lock himself into his own room to avoid doing it. His debut as a main role in a film called El Día de la Bestia was incredibly successful, winning the Goya Award for the Best New Actor. He got his, this role after a brain injury, but he wasn't accepted at first. It was when the filming was about to begin that the director Alex de la Iglesia called him. In this movie, where he and a priest look for a baby who is supposed to be the Antichrist, he acts as a death metal fa fan who has a great knowledge of human tribes. His next year's success, and doubly the biggest one, would be the creation of the Torrente Saga, directed by himself. Segura also plays the main role in these films. These movies narrate the adventures of a Spanish man called José Luis Torrente, a sexist and racist policeman who is also a drunker and an Atlético de Madrid fan. During the filming of this pentology, he gets to work with some great actors, such as Tony LeBlanc. He also has to do the incredible feat of increasing his weight by 20 kilograms every time he has to play the role. The first title of this saga, Torrente, El Brazo Tonto de la Ley, earned him the Goya Award for Best New Director. The whole series in general was incredibly prosperous, to such a point that the third film collected more money in Spain that, than Star Wars Episode 3, The Revenge of the Sith. Apart from his previously mentioned jobs, he also played a role in some big international films, 
such as the Hellboy movie from 2004 and El Oro de Moscú. Some of the remarkable jobs are present in the program via Hell Centro de la Tele, where he talked about all the TV programs and historic moments of RTVE, as well as a section he had during one of the seasons in El Hormiguero, where he explained some cinema tricks and facts. His latest films are the one from the Padre Rey Más Que Uno saga, confirmed by two films released in 2019 and 2020, respectively. These films narrate the life of a father of four children and the difficulties of taking care of them in certain situations. These two films were a total success, even with the fact that the second one was released during the COVID-19 pandemic and there were restrictions to go to the cinema. Right now, he is rumored to be working on a third part of this series. And this is the end. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation and thank you so much for listening to it. Jose Echegaray was born the 19th of April in 1832 in Madrid, Spain. He was an engineer, a playwright, a politician and a mathematician. He was a very important person in Spain at the end of the 19th century, because he gets good results in every area he entered. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature. He was the first Spanish getting that prize. In science, he was the most important mathematician of the 19th century in Spain. He introduced the Charles geometry, the Galois theory and the elliptic function. He also introduced some things in the physics area. His father was a doctor and a teacher from Aragon, and his mother was from Navarra. He lived his childhood in Murcia, when, where he got the bachelor's degree. Then he moved to Madrid to study here, in San Isidro. After finishing, he studied in the university to end up being a civil engineer, as the best of his promotion. He also found the newspaper El Economista, which is important now too. Later, he acted as a teacher in the university, teaching science. The most important aspect of Changaray is the literature. He started publishing at the 1865 with a pseudonym. Later, he was accepted in the Real Academia Española, an important institution for the Spanish language. In his life, he wrote about 70 theater plays. And finally, in 1904, he got the Nobel Prize with Federic Mistral. Hi everyone, we are Lucia Poyatos and Lydia Murillo, a student for 2 Batch B, and we are going to talk about one of the most important writers who studied in the I.S. Yes San Isidro called Jacinto Benavente. The I.S. Yes San Isidro is the oldest high school in Spain, which was found in 1845. It's an institute that is located in a historic building in Madrid, which belongs to the 17th century. Before this building was built, here in Madrid, there was the Imperial College and the Royal Studies of San Isidro. That's why it has more than 4,000 years of history. He's famous not only for his long career, 
because the Yes San Isidro is famous because it's a place where four Nobel Prize students of literature were studying here during their childhood. They were Jacinto Benavente, Vicente Alexander, José Chegaray and Camilo José Cela. Also, we can talk about other writers like Lope de Vega and Antonio Machado, but we are going to talk about Jacinto Benavente. But first, we are going to talk a little more of San Isidro. In addition to being famous for the writers that they studied here, the Yes San Isidro had political figures such as Nicolas Salmeron, who was a Republican politician and president of the course and government of Spain, or José Canalejas, who was the president of the Spanish government. On the other hand, there were also actors studying here like Santiago Segura, athletes like the tennis player Manolo Santana, and painters such as Eduardo Rosales. But today we are going to talk about Jacinto Benavente. Jacinto Benavente was born in August 12, 1866 in Madrid. His father, Mariano Benavente, was a prestigious doctor. So he grew up in the culture family environment that allowed him to access school early. Here in the photo on the right, we can see Jacinto Benavente's file when he studied in the San Isidro High School. He began his law studies at the Central University of Madrid. But when his father died in 1885, he abandoned his law studies to devote himself to literature. For some time, he worked in the circus. His travels in Europe helped him to carry out his plays, becoming the master of the renovation theater of the 19th century. In 1899, he founded the Artistic Theatre in which Buying Land collaborated and in 1907 he received an award for his world most famous work, Los Intereses Creados. After this, the play was performed in all Spain and in the main theatres of Hispan America. Later, Jacinto Buenavente entered the Royal Spanish Academy in 1912, held a set at the Congress of Deputies in 1918, and after that, he received the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1922. On the other hand, he received during his time in North America the, Nor the New York Adoptive Sun Hour. In addition to being a Spanish comedian, he was also famous for being a journalist and writing chronicles in some new papers and chronicle media of his time. He directed the magazines White and Black and Literature Life. Now we are going to talk about his work. Jacinto Benavente was the writer of more than 2,000 works. Between his works, we can highlight some of them like La Marquerida, the Food of the Beast, Saturday Night, Autumn Roses, and the most famous Best Interests. His comedy was situated in the late 19th and 20th centuries. In his comedies, he used as topics the love, the infidelity, the adultery, and the love fight between relatives. Because these topics define a high society which only cares about money and social classes. His work was known as social trade, and today everyone knows Jacinto Benavente such the writer who represents the realms, the irony, the burgundy, and the spontaneity in a society which was not used to seeing modern tragedy. His aim was to entertain the public with his works, but he wanted to make a moderate critique of high society in these years. Vested Interest is one of the best known and most important plays of Jacinto Benavente. It is sent in 17th century in Italia and he tries to criticize the burgundy. The main characters of this play are Crispin, criminal who pretends he is the son of the burgess lord, Leandro, criminal partner and friend of Crispin, 
Colombina, Young and Beautiful Housemaid of Doña Sirena, Politinella, The Antagonist of the Play, He is Very Rich and Powerful, and then Silvia, She is the Politinella's daughter. Now I'm going to tell you the synopsis of this play. Crispin and Leandro arrive in the 17th century Italian city seeking justice. They have no money, only the clothes they wear have a loo, so they decide to impersonate a great lord and his servant who travel with a goal. Thanks to Crispin lip, they tip everyone. The hotelier who housed them and even lends them money, Harlequin and the cap time, and then Pantalon. Leandro meets and falls in love with Silvia, the only daughter of the rich Politinella. Crispin managed through their numerous experiences that the wedding take place and in this way they can pay and get rid of the judicial process. And finally, here we can see a piece writing in English of the place. Thank you very much for listening to us and we hope you like it a lot.